Hi, I'm David and welcome to Leisure Bit. And today I'm going to be talking to you about something that's been a real game changer for me. And I have mentioned it before. If you look back at the Lithium series, you'll see the video on it. Um, but it's about this little fella here, which is a relay. I'm going to learn a little bit more about those because I get asked quite a lot of questions about it. So this is a little bit more information around installing an automatic changeover relay for when you're using an inverter in your motorhome, caravan or camper van so that you can use the same sockets as what you would normally use on hookup and switch between the two. So let's take a look. So this video is simply explaining what I've done. I'm not encouraging you to mess around with your mains electrics. If you aren't qualified or competent in that, get an auto electrician to do it. Let's stay safe. So firstly, is this video for you? If you're planning to or have installed an inverter and you're wanting to use your existing sockets with it, then this might come in really handy for you. Often, some people are completely off grid, so you don't have the shore or the mains hookup connected, so you end up where you just need a single set of sockets running off your inverter in that scenario. So this doesn't really help with that. Where it does help is where you want to use your existing sockets in your camper van, motorhome, or caravan, or any other recreational vehicle for that matter, and you don't want to install a separate set of sockets. The reason I chose to do that was purely for convenience, because then you don't have to unplug and plug things, and it just saves a load of wire. Looking at the options, the first one is, we've got three options really if we want to do some form of automatic switchover, or switch over to use the same sockets. Option number one, is we do what we're going to talk about here. So let's move on to option two, which is to install a manual changeover. So you can do the similar principle that we're going to do here with a manual switch. So you can switch between your shore power or your hookup and your inverter power by changing a switch over. Trouble with that is it works for some people, it doesn't work for others. So there's nothing at all wrong with whatever solution you choose to do. It's what works for you. I wanted something a little bit cleverer though. So that left two different options. One, we could buy a very specialist system that has this capability built in. Or we could use an automatic changeover capability. Now you can buy these ready made up, but given the principle of it is it's it's quite straightforward really and we'll just come on to that now if you want to use separate sockets that's absolutely fine again it's whatever works for you and you can just run some separate separate sockets off the inverter what i do recommend though whichever route you choose is to install a residual current device or it's like a circuit breaker and how that works is if there's a differential between the power going into the circuit and the power coming out of the circuit, for example, if you've touched an appliance and you're leaking power through your body, it cuts the circuit when it gets above a certain amount of power, normally 30 milliamps. That can potentially save your life. Just be very careful and I would highly recommend whatever setup you're going for, irrespective of the type you're using, unless it's built in, even if it's a portable power bank with an inverter in, I would still personally use some form of residual current device to help protect yourself. But when you're within the metal vehicle, if it's earth, there's always a risk you're going to have current travelling through your body and you don't want that. So let's have a quick look at costs now. So the cost for installing a manual switch is going to be probably about £30. The cost of doing a specialist solution can run into thousands. 
literally thousands and thousands to be fair. And the rough price of doing the changeover relay, as I've done it, was under £50. So that's, that's quite reasonable there. And of course, if you use your existing uh, inverter sockets, it's going to cost you nothing. If you do, however, start running wires to other plugs and sockets and things, it's rapidly going to get over that £50. But again, sometimes you have a specific need to set it up in a certain way where you only want to run certain things off the inverter, and that is absolutely fine. The way I want it is, I want the on-grid experience off-grid, which is what I wanted to achieve, and I don't want to faff on. As you probably saw if you saw the coffee maker video, you'll see even on that I've made it more convenient for myself. But the whole thing then just switches over automatically when you turn the inverter on. So why do it? It just works. And that's what I love about it. Let's talk a little bit about relays first, just to explain what we're doing and then we'll run through in terms of how we get to actually setting it up. A relay, and the type we're using here, is something that looks a little bit like this. They come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, you might see them in your car or your van, and they're often used to switch a lower power to switch a higher power. So they're often used for things such as switching on high power spotlights or other devices, maybe even smaller inverters. Um, to switch them on. But this particular one has a 230 volt coil as it's called on it. And what happens when you pass power through the coil, it creates a magnetic field because you can see the coil there and there's a big, it creates basically an electromagnet. And what that does is rather than having a manual switch where you would turn yourself, it moves the contacts across for you. The other point is, this is what's called a double pole, double toggle relay. And what that does is, basically, um, if you think of two poles, uh, we'll use the fingers here, I don't think this is going to be the best demo, so hopefully the slides help better. But when it's energised, the poles will move from there, and then off, on, off. And... There's a contact at each side of there, so we'll assume here, so on, off, on, off. And what we can do then, because there's two of those poles, we can actually then switch between where do you want the sockets powered from? Is it from the shore or the hookup? Or is it from the inverter? And then just to make it automatic, when we turn the inverter on, if we get that to energise the coil, what that will do then is automatically switch it over to inverter power when we switch the inverter on. So this clicks over and then the sockets are powered from the inverter. When the inverter's switched off, the sockets are powered from the hookup or the shore power and then everything just works. You're not messing around making any other setting changes. Worth noting, this is subtly different to UPS or uninterruptible power supply. How those work is when you disconnect the shore power or the hookup, that then basically keeps the power running because it feeds through the inverter. The reason I didn't go for one of them was number one, that's not what I wanted to happen. You know, it wasn't about keeping the power running whether I've got the, it plugged in or not. It was about making sure that when I turn the inverter on, it automatically flips the sockets over to work with the inverter. And when the inverter's switched off, it works back with the shore power or the hookup. The other great thing about this is, uh, you're probably aware, and if you've watched some of my other videos, we talk about solid state relay um, for driving things such as the USB-C um, power delivery and things like that to offload power from the original installed unit. So we don't overload it, basically. So exactly the principle we touched on earlier. Um, but what we've got here is, with a mechanical relay, rather than an elect electrical or electronic relay, we've got physical mechanical separation. So the contacts are actually moving between the two points and you've got that physical separation. And that means that everything's disconnected 
from each other. So you don't have a situation where you've got power coming in from the mains via the uh, hookup inlet and then feeding back into the inverter. They're on separate poles so it keeps those separate and the common bit is the sockets. And again, one for live, one for neutral, common to the sockets, normally closed to the shore power or hookup, normally open to the inverter. So when you energise the coil, um, the normally closed opens, make the logic from that, and then connects to the normally open connections. So it moves across from normally closed to normally open. That then switches your live and neutral feed from the shore or hookup to the inverter. And then everything just works. So nice and simple. And I hope that made sense. And we've got the slides there just to follow through. I'll pop the slides on the website and a link to them if you want to kind of take them and have a look offline as well. So the parts I used are this relay, um, which is about £19. I got it from RS um, Components, RS Supplies, or whatever they're called at the moment. Um, I'll pop a link in the description to all of these, these parts. There's then a socket for it, and basically, the relay goes into the socket, like so. See it there. And it also comes with a little clip. We can lock the relay in situ. Now that's quite handy when we're gonna be moving about and you know the van, caravan or motorhome will be jogging around a bit. That just stops it coming loose and out of the socket. And then you've got your connections there. Now in this case, we're gonna use the coil connections, which are those two on the ends there. And then we're going to use the outer two and then the centre ones we're just going to screw down because they're not used on this particular relay and the sockets kind of generic to cover a number of them. And we can either fasten the, this down or just put a little bit of a, a bar on there and fasten it to and clip in um, the sort you have in the electrical consumer units. And if you've got space, you can obviously fit it in there. So how we're going to wire it up now um, I'll show you in, in the pictures. Basically, we're going to connect the live and the neutral on each side so we don't cross them over. And also the same, we'll loop it back from the normally open, basically the relay um, connections there to energise the coil. And then the normally closed is the live and the neutral to the shore power or the hookup. And the common goes to the sockets live and neutral. So we've got the earths connected up through this connector here and then of course we've got the earths from them and what we need to do is connect the earths together so that we actually keep the earth path going through each one of those and make sure it's connected up to the earth which is normally a bus bar in your consumer unit. We also need to remember if the inverter has a separate earth connection to make sure we connect that to earth as well. Off the common, we connect back to the sockets, which I've labelled up. Socket there. And then on the normally open, we connect back through here to the coil, one at the other side, live and neutral, it's 230 volt coil. And then up at the top here, we've got the normally closed, which feeds through to the mains inlet through this wire here. So inverter, sockets, mains inlet, and we're using the two outer connections for each of them, which map to this relay. What I did as well is mount it in a waterproof box. Again, I'll pop a link in the description and then just fit some cable glands to that and just fit, fit a few of them along there. You end up with three cables coming out of there. You might find a better place to install it in your van or you might want to do it that way. The reason I put it in the box, pure and simple, you've got connections there with live mains or inverter power in and you don't want to be poking around and get your fingers in them. So that's what I use to house it. 
Uh, it's waterproof as well, but in reality, it's, it's just to keep any dust out and more importantly, fingers out. So here's a quick look at the boxed up unit. So you end up then with three cables coming out of it. One is the inverter input. One is the shore input or hookup power, which is basically, actually, it's the mains coming out of the power distribution unit from the breaker that would have fed to it. That makes sense. So it's not coming straight from the shore hookup. It's going into your van's power distribution unit. And from the power distribution unit, it's actually feeding through a breaker. And then out of the breaker, we take a feed into the relay uh, for the sockets. And we then take a feed back from there, which is the sockets connection, one on the common. And we take that back to the sockets so we, we connect it on basically so that you're actually putting that in sequence with the sockets so you've got mains in sockets inverter in and again don't forget to run your inverter through an rcd before it gets to this and then it just makes sure it's as safe as we can possibly make it so when the mains is on you can see the flow of current through the circuit there and when the inverter's on, you can see the flow through the circuit there. The arrows there are representing which way the current's flowing based on where the relay contacts are set. Worth noting as well, on these relays, there's a little switch on the top which allows you to manually change it over in case there was ever a problem with the coil. However, it would normally fail safe on shore power but if anything did go wrong, which is fairly unlikely, but if it did, you do actually have the manual changeover on those. So fairly straightforward if you needed to kind of force it over and there was a problem with the relay. I've never had a problem personally with, with these relays or indeed any other relays. The only time you generally get a problem is if you use them outside of the design specification. It's also worth noting that when you if you've got a soft start inverter, um, you can get a little buzz when it comes on from the relay. It's just while the coil energises up. And if as it's powering down while the capacitors in the inverter are discharging, it can buzz a little bit as it browns out basically before it drops the connection there. Depending again what load you've got running on it. If there's a load running on it, it'll be quite quick. If not, it can buzz a little bit, but nothing at all to worry about there. That's the principles of a changeover relay and again under £50 but for me it's been an absolute game changer it also saved a load of wiring for extra sockets and it gives a little bit of the art of the possible of what you can do for me that was super simple um, I've been doing electronics all my life and electrical work so really straightforward but big game changer personally anyway but it's what works for you. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel as it really helps me out. If you didn't like it, press the thumbs down button twice. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye!